Welcome to the program. This is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com alongside Tony Sakalas. We've had a couple days now to digest Alabama's spring football practice. We've yeah. seen practices on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Um, how, how you holding up? You a little tired? Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, it's pretty good. We kind of hit it full steam and kind of feels like it's back in the fall. It's not obviously yet, but it, we kind of get that, that football fever kind of running back again. Today, practice number three from Alabama's indoor facility. A um, little bit of weather today in Tuscaloosa, which we don't mind. But um, we got a chance to look at the running backs. Uh, Tony, want to hit on those guys? Yeah, because they moved indoors, we got to see the running backs a little bit better. Um, uh, I wouldn't be concerned about uh, Bo Scarborough's injury. I think he looked really fine. Um, it, the order of this in, in this practice was uh, Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs, Bo Scarborough, uh, Najee Harris, Brian Robinson, and B.J. Emmons. Uh, it's interesting that I, you can't take too much out of that order because there are injuries or whatnot, but it is interesting that they kept somewhat of an order mm-hmm. and that Josh Jacobs was ahead of Bo Scarborough. Take that for what you may. I think it's way too early to take that, but it is worth, I guess, maybe mentioning that, uh, that they did kind of keep somewhat of a rep chart order and... Jacobs looks to be that number two guy as of now. It's way too early, though. I mean, and it's obvious that there's just so much talent in that area of Alabama's team. I mean, they're just, you know, you can go down the list, and every single one of those guys is a top guy from Rivals.com, and they certainly showed it today. And I think what was great about today's practice is they're right in front of you. I mean, as you mentioned, the running backs are right right in front of you, and as you can see from the video, they're coming right at you full steam. So it was great to see the running backs because we really hadn't seen them Tuesday or Thursday. Um, yeah, uh, Burton Burns, the running backs coach, too, it was interesting to see him kind of interact. He, he actually didn't seem too happy with the running backs on the day. I, I remember uh, he kind of got after Brian Robinson and said, you know, it, Brian Robinson didn't go all the way around the cone. He, you know, he was tough on him. It's kind of Burton Burns' style, too, so it's, that's nothing out of the ordinary. But at, at one point, he was telling them to focus and to, to keep the, his eyes on, on him. And keep their eyes on him. And uh, he actually turned to some of the audience that was viewing the drill and said, you know, these guys, these guys' attention span is this big. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of, it's kind of a funny moment. He was a little bit frustrated, I think, because he got, he's got, you know, a lot of new running backs on that, on that group. And so I think he's just kind of working things out. There's a lot, a lot of fluid motion right now, probably in that group. Moving on to the quarterbacks. I mean, there's not a quarterback battle. I mean, we already talked about that. Um, and it's pretty evident out at practice. Jalen is, you know, going to be the guy. What are your thoughts on the quarterbacks in general? It was like you said. It was interesting to see that, you know, Saban named pretty much named Hurts the starter. You know, he doesn't always do that, but it was always going to be a stretch for it to be a quarterback competition. Anyways, today we didn't really get to see them do too much. They kind of just they dropped back, threw it to each other. It's really hard and hard to judge when they're just dropping back and kind of lobbing the ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the practices that I've, you know, that we've been to, I really haven't seen them connect with any wide receivers. So people are asking us on the boards how they look. I really haven't seen them connect with wide receivers of you. Yeah, I th- well, I think maybe outdoors. They're kind of far behind in outdoors, and I hadn't really looked at them too closely until today. Uh, normally when they move indoors, you can kind of see up close how they how they match up and, and match with the receivers that you normally have a period where they're kind of throwing. But today they were really working with dropbacks. Um it's hard to tell. Uh, if there's anything I could tell between, you know, I, I kind of liked what I saw from T- Tunga Vailoa. Um, Hurts, obviously, I think it's going to be the guy. Mac Jones looks a little skinny, especially on the legs. And so if he's going to be the backup, if he's going to win that job, maybe even take some reps next season. I mean, he looks like somebody that needs to beef up a little bit this offseason if he's going to start getting hit. Yeah, I think when you look at, you know, their depth chart or their rep chart, I mean, it's clearly Jalen, then um, Tungo Vailoa, and then Mac Jones. And I think that's you could, pretty You obvious. could probably make that argument, yeah. Um, it's not so much like an order thing, but it's... That if I was looking at it, just eyeball testing it, that's what I would see. Yeah, and from Tungo Vailoa, I mean, very established quarterback coming in, and I'm really eager to see what he can do this year because, um, you know, I just like his intangibles. I like his delivery. He's a left-handed quarterback, and um, I think he brings a lot to the table. Similar size as Jalen, and I think he has some of the same abilities in terms of being a dual-threat guy and somebody that can make defenders miss but also keep your eyes down and fill to make the big play. Yeah, Calvin Ridley actually had an interesting comment, and he kind of – maybe told about for a reporter uh, when they asked him, did, did they all throw the same? And he said, well, you know, one of them's left-handed. <laughs> right, yeah. So uh, uh, he did say that the ball comes off a little bit differently, but it's not that big of a, a judge uh, adjustment. You know, it's not something that's going to 
matter in the long run. I just thought that that was a funny kind of response. Sure. What about um, the wide receivers? I mean, I have you know really liked what I've seen from this group. I think uh, there are some new names all over the place. Can you hit on some of those guys? Yeah. Uh, well, today we had Calvin Ridley leading the group, followed by Cam. I think it was Cam Sims and then uh, Robert Foster. Um, they all looked solid. Cam Sims is just tall, and sure. I, he's impressive to me. Just, just he stands out. He's somebody that I think could really make a difference uh, this season. Uh, we, I, I got to see Jerry Judy for the first time really up close, and he looked very explosive and quick off off the ball, off, off the line. You mm-hmm. know, during some of those kind of like quick off the line drills that they were that they were running. Uh, Robert looked, Robert Foster to me. I mm-hmm. mean, just watching him a little bit closer today, I thought that. He's one guy that has moved up on my list. I mean, I have a great respect for his ability on the field and how he gets in and out of cuts and comes back to the football, turns it upfield. I think he's going to be very explosive. And another guy that I mentioned on my Alabama Hot 11 was... Um, Tyrell Shavers. Ty- my yeah. goodness. Yeah, I, I Honestly, coming in, I, I was like, okay, Jerry Judy you know, is a guy for me to really just focus in on. And rightfully so. He's incredible. But, I mean, Tyrell Shavers really just impressed me with his size, physique. And then I looked up. He's a freshman. I mean, he's uh, yeah, he's a he's six six too, straight yeah. up, straight off the bat. So I mean, yeah, he he could be a definite mismatch uh, guy. I mean, and he's got some speed, like you said. He he looks pretty explosive. So yeah, I mean, so much talent at that area. Um, moving to the offensive line, I I really you know I'm still getting accustomed to you know names and numbers. Um, we've seen the offensive line. Sometimes you can get a peek at them at some practices. What's your assessment? So on our board, we've had a lot of people say that maybe Alex Leatherwood gained some weight they were worried Alex Leatherwood looks pretty fine to me uh the guy's he, he's a big guy he's an SEC lineman um he's he wasn't in the starting lineup today uh or the, the first rep uh the first group on the rep chart whatever you want to call it uh that was uh from left to right Jonah Williams Ross Pierce Biker uh Bradley Bozeman Lester Cotton and Matt Womack and Matt Womack is actually somebody that has stepped in these last few practices kind of taken a spot on that first mm-hmm. team line He's somebody to, look, to watch out for. Um, he's he's got a tackle body, and uh, I, he's kind of one of those guys that wasn't talked about. You know, people are talking about Scott Lashley, Elliot Baker, uh, maybe even Lester Cotton at that right tackle position. Uh, Leatherwood. Matt Womack's a serious player, and, and and somebody that could really take that right tackle job. And right now, he's looking like that's he's the guy currently right now. Do you feel that after talking to Bradley Bozeman, he's really the centerpiece of this offensive line group? Yeah, and I kind of felt that. I, I mean, mean, not centerpiece pun-wise, but like just, you know, being a... You know, being he is and, both the center and sure. the centerpiece of the line. I kind of felt that way heading into it. Uh, Jonah Williams might be the most, you know, talented and, and the biggest, like, maybe NFL guy in the future, but Bradley Bozeman's the heart of this offensive line. He was, from a leadership standpoint, he was there last year, too. So he's he's also just stepping in there. Um, I, I think they keep him at center, um, and that's kind of where the leader on the offensive line plays. So that will really be good. You hear him talk a lot about uh, Ryan Kelly, mm-hmm. and you can tell another, another leader, former former Alabama center before him. You can tell he modeled so much of his game after Ryan Kelly, and I, I think that the similar personality, similar leadership skills for both players. Switching the defensive side of the football, I mean, it's it's awesome during practice. The viewing period where we get to see the defensive linemen because they're right up next to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they're, they're gigantic. And I mean, a guy like Deshaun Han, I mean, what's not to be excited about with that entire group? Yeah, the, they're huge. Yeah, they're always huge. I mean, because you got Deron Payne too in the middle. And we've been seeing Raekwon Davis out on the edge, and that's the one that always. <laughs> Raekwon Davis definitely slimmed up, but he still looks big. I mean, he has no wasted weight now. He's just a big dude. Six seven, three hundred. I don't know. Pounds? Yeah, I mean, is yeah, that... yeah, he's he's he wears that extremely well. It wears it really well. He's he's he he's definitely slimmed down and, and can play more of that edge edge role. And I think that's why he slimmed down. Is I think they see him out on the edge, and he definitely looks like a terror out there. Have Have you got a chance to see uh, Quinn and Williams? I've only seen a little bit of Quinton Williams. I, I heard he got rave reviews. He's definitely somebody to watch. Uh, same with Isaiah Bugs. Isaiah Bugs, interestingly enough, if you remember when Saban was talking about the defensive line, that was actually the first person he mentioned. That just might mean nothing, but it also might mean something. So um, that's another person to watch, too. Um, Raekwon's been on the team, been practicing more. Mm-hmm. That might be why he's ahead on the rep chart. So it's it's like with all these rep chart 
presumptions right now. It's just basically what we're seeing. It doesn't necessarily mean anything, especially three practices in. It could it could all be a wash, you know. Yeah, it's just basically practice. And they really right. stress on the fact that there's no depth chart. I know we have a depth chart at BatmanInsider.com, but I mean, in terms of a physical depth chart right now, I don't think that exists. Right. It. it I mean, they. The coaches make the mistake. Have sure. some kind of idea of what's going on, and, and I. It tends to reflect the rep chart. Yeah. But it's just so early. I wouldn't be surprised if next week we come back and there's people that we were saying they were doing great, and now they're moved to second. Sure. Team. And I think we'll have. Yeah. You know, an organized depth chart going into a day, but then after that, think about how long till you know and practice you, starts. And you also got new players coming in the yeah, summer. Absolutely. You never, you, you never know. Some of these true freshmen, you know, look at the defensive line. You got LeBron Ray mm-hmm. could definitely come in and shake things up um, as a true freshman. There's a whole bunch of. He's not the only one. There's sure. some. Some you know wide receivers that could really step in and kind of get in that mix as well. There, there's a whole bunch of things. Moving to the linebackers, uh, what have you seen? I mean, there's some players that we've been really excited to talk about. Can you talk about the, the that position? Yeah, I spent some time looking at that yesterday. I, I didn't see very much of it today, uh, just because I was focusing on different things. It was definitely a surprise to see Ben Wilson. Uh, I mean, sorry, <laughs> Ben Davis uh, move to outside linebacker. Everyone's been penciling him as a mm-hmm. mid. Uh, inside linebacker, it you know that kind of could be a shakeup too, it, uh, and add some more depth to the outside linebacker. Alabama is trying to replace two spots there, mm-hmm. so um, he might actually have an easier time breaking into the playing time on outside linebacker than he would on inside linebacker. Um, can you talk about? Um, sorry to interrupt, but Sean Dion Hamilton, can you kind of give us some background on on what you've seen from him and and what you expect from him? Yeah, it's hard to tell much because you know he's got that injury and he's been he's just been in a black shirt. He kind of rehabbing on the ACL. Um, he's been wearing one of those uh, high uh, elevation training masks. Yeah, it looks like he's about to climb Everest. Or yeah, something. he looks like well, he looks like Bane from, yeah, there you uh, go. from Batman. <laughs> is what he looks like. Him and Jared Maiden, the the defensive back. Who's, Maiden's just been on the bike. He's battling back from a hip injury. Uh, SDH is battling off of a. Uh, ACL, um, but uh, he's running gingerly on it, uh, doing a lot of workouts. He's on the field. Those are all encouraging signs. I don't expect him to do much this spring, but I do expect him to be ready by the start of the season. If not, inside uh, kind of looks like currently if you know they have to suit up against Florida State today, it would be uh, Rashawn Evans and uh, Keith Holcomb and maybe some Mac Wilson, but I think you're going to see kind of that Keith Holcomb and Mac Wilson kind of slide down the peg to make, obviously, room for a starter last year in Sean John Hamilton. Any other linebackers that you want to touch on? Uh, Dylan Moses is so physically impressive just as a pure athletic body. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he He's he's great. He, add him to the, <laughs> the list of just incredibly athletic kids, like, like Raekwon at Alabama just comes in and they're already grown men when they when they step on campus. Um, that being said, he struggled a little bit in some of the coverage drills. As a true freshman, they're still working him out. It's interesting that they see him as a... Uh, um, they're putting him in the inside linebackers instead of the outside linebackers. That was a... Uh, that was a question heading into spring. And so it looks like a lot of people have uh, compared him to um, Ruben Foster. So him being inside, maybe that's the way Alabama sees him as well. So, Defensive backs, um, earlier this week we got to talk to Mika Fitzpatrick, who's moving over to the corner position. Um, your assessment or your take on the secondary? That was a little bit of a surprise to have Minka move to the cornerback position. Um, that being said, it makes sense. Uh, you, you need a lockdown cornerback in the position. Uh, I think they've got two now, and Anthony Averett and Minka Fitzpatrick on either side. They're pretty solid there. Uh, Tony Brown's kind of a, a physical corner that, that can play that star position, just like Minka can as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Alabama views that they have more depth at safety. Uh, you look at a guy like Kareem McDonald, which was the only cornerback that they recruited, and well, he's out there with the safeties. So I, I don't really think they recruited a cornerback in this, in this year's class that's really going to play cornerback or true cornerback. You might see McDonald eventually go down to that star position, which is more of a safety probably than a cornerback. It, it, it has a lot of safety qualities at that star position. Um, well, I mean, just just getting to look at you know some of these players, it's the first time that I've actually seen a lot of these guys on the field, and it's just so evident that Minka Fitzpatrick is just a phenomenal athlete. I mean, all these guys obviously are, but what he brings to the table, I mean, is just it's 
it's really just a pleasure to watch. And I think eventually someday we're going to see him on Sundays. And I, um, I mean, that's pretty much the case, right? I think I mean, next year we're going to yeah. see him on Sundays. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I mean, yeah. you should just see him out there. It's fantastic. We have some small video of him. Hopefully we can get up more. And talking to him earlier, Tony asked the question, uh, what was the conversation like when you moved from safety to corner? And what did he say? He said, well, there wasn't a conversation, <laughs> which, which is to be expected. He said he, he was in the film room and there was a 2-9 next to... Uh, or slotted in that cornerback on the... He actually made the mistake and called it he a depth did, chart. He did, he uh, did. And then he corrected it. himself sure. and called it a rep chart. Sure. But, um, yeah, he, he he said he likes it there. He said mm-hmm. that's where he came to play. That's where he came where he came to Alabama to play. Um, that's definitely the position he'll probably play at the NFL. We, we asked him that, and, and that's the answer he gave. He, he kind of sees himself as a cornerback. So it's good for him to get back at that position because I think he's gone after this year. I think it's pretty obvious. Um, anything to touch on with the special teams game? I mean, I don't think we've... I we mean, don't usually get to see special teams. so it's, it's special teams. Yeah, I, I think some of y'all have asked how, how the kicking game's going. They're always gone before we're there. Uh, same with punting. There's been, um, a, um, there's been a haircut, though, right? Yes, J.K. Scott's got the crew cut. <laughs> he cut off the, you know, l- last year, uh, last season I wrote a story about how his sister <laughs> came and braided his hair uh, prior to the Peach Bowl. Uh, now there's nothing to braid. He's got these gotten the straight down to business crew cut uh look going on so yeah well my name is kyle henderson at bamainsider.com this is tony sakalas um you know we're wrapping live from our indoor studio right and yeah. uh, you can catch all our coverage and especially tony's great work back on bamainsider.com we have some great stuff coming for you we also got the bamainsider.com podcast which we can drop and you can also find that on itunes and google play um, until next time, we'll see you next Tuesday. We got Saban next week, and um, I mean, more pretty players, much yeah, yeah, more players. And uh, yeah. catch all our coverage back at BamaInsider.com.